I guess there's no better way to start rolling on the bike again than a stop at Ye Old Faithful. I'm currently about to leave the city centre of Nagasaki to start my longest ride yet, which is about 113 kilometres today. But it's the opposite of the last riding day, because now, instead of climbing the mountains to get into Nagasaki, I've got to climb the mountains to get out of Nagasaki, so all of my climbing's pretty much at the beginning, after about five kilometres in or so, and then should be pretty flat along the coastline as we head up the Saga. This climb's quite long, but it's pretty gradual like, so it's really manageable and it doesn't hurt that the roads I'm on right now are very nice. It looks quite busy right now, but it hasn't really felt like it too much. The majority of the traffic's coming away from where I'm going, like into Nagasaki, so it's been quite nice going on the other side. This is the road I'm trying to avoid this morning on the right hand side. <laughs> Here I've missed a turn off on this bloody steep section of downhill. It's a bloody nightmare trying to turn it back around. I'm not too long done that climb though. <laughs> when I said it was gradual, what I really meant was it was gradually getting steeper. But we've made it and I've done my mountain pass for the day. So should be another chill 100 kilometers for the rest of the day. Now, even though it's 100K, the elevation is quite chill. So it should be a nice cruise all the way to Saga. But I do have to say, I think a lot of it is on main roads, so might be another one of those days where it's a lot of traffic, but we'll see how it goes. And I don't know how well the GoPro is going to pick this up right now, but this descent that I've been going on so far, well, I'm going this way now, but when I started on this road after the climb, it was really steep and, you know, I've been saying before about how I've got a bit of descension anxiety, if you will, that I'm worried I'm going to slip out. I feel like it nearly came true there. And just as I felt like I was getting a bit more confident with descending, I feel like there was just about to come crashing down on me. Because obviously I'm carrying a bit of weight on my bike at the minute and, you know, just as I was starting to go down the descent, feel myself a little bit, you know, I started pressing the brake and then I realised, oh, I'm not stopping as quick, but you know, it's steep and I've got a bit of weight. Then I start pressing my brakes more and then my back tyres start to skid out a little bit and my life flashed before my eyes just a little bit. And there was a couple cars behind me, so if something actually did go wrong, that was probably me dead. But I do have enough bike control that I was able to make it out the other side unscathed, so that might have scared me on descending just a little bit again, but you know, it's a step-by-step -step process of getting over this thing. Saying all that though, I am quite excited to go down the mountain again, so how are you? Let's get on with it, eh? And ironically enough, by picking the more foresty road on the mountain, I might have picked the steeper way down, but you know, I made my bed now, I'm gonna lay in it. Well, I don't know whether I filmed any of this town when I was going to Nagasaki, but I've ended up in the exact same town as I started the climb in the other day. But it just turns out I've taken a bit of a different road, so it's quite interesting. Must be a bit of a choke point to get over the mountain here. That's if you're not taking the big expressway roads though, because bicycles aren't allowed on the biggest roads here in Japan. But even so, I mean, I'm showing you a bit of it now, just in case I didn't show you the other day, just how nice this area is, but even these small roads are proven pretty pretty busy, so it looks like a lot of cars as well want to avoid the big expressway. 
signs that often but apparently this road down here is a no-no for me and I have no idea why. been on some busy roads already but now I came with a stretch of road where I'm pretty much going to be on this the majority of the time for the rest of the ride and it does seem like it's pretty busy today it's not like chocker chocker block but it is pretty busy but given that it's a road that a lot of people drive on should have a decent amount of food options on the way so probably go about another hour have some lunch and then try and grind this busy road out I think just about 12 o'clock and don't think there's a better time to eat if you ask me. And normally right I'm pretty indifferent on hamburger. I think hamburger steak is a bit mid if I'm being honest. But that apparently was what you hamburger so that elevated it from an okay dish to it was a bit more expensive so I think I'll be eating a little bit cheaper this evening. And I'm currently standing in this interesting little area where there's a toddy gate area which is basically just a bunch of toddy gates which are going into the water and like a road which is going into the water as well so it's quite interesting not sure of the backstory on that but it's cool to see either way. I'm a bit over halfway through the ride now but I think I've still got quite a bit to do on this busy road so I don't think I'm going to touch the camera for a bit so you'll see me and the, probably the next thing you'll see after this is when I start rolling a saga. I've actually came off that main road a lot quicker than I thought I was going to which is nice so I can get my camera back out and fling it around capture some of this lovely stuff. down with some of this b-roll shooting because I'm gonna have to buy way more extra micro SD cards than I was gonna originally but fuck me some of this right now unbelievably scenic I am gonna have to reel myself in today though unfortunately so I'll catch up with you when I get into the center of Saga I did forget to take the GoPro out with me when I went for a little walk in the middle of Saga but all that really happened was I seen the outside of the castle ruins because it was closed and then ate some curry and went back to the hostel. As you can see it rained a bit very early this morning but I think all the rain has already passed for the day. I think so anyway but it's not forecast to be a lot at least. And I probably left too early this morning because I've only got just over 60 kilometers to do well just under now because I've came out of the city centre of Saga but 
I've got just over 60 kilometers to do to ride into Fukuoka, so I think I'm just gonna take it nice and chill for today because I don't have to check in till like late afternoon. But yeah, I'm just gonna have a nice chill ride down, probably not touch the camera that much to be honest. And you know, if I get there too early, then Fukuoka is a big place. I'm sure I'll find something to do. And it's only been a couple days, but tomorrow's gonna be another rest day in Fukuoka because I feel like I couldn't pass Fukuoka without giving it like a full day to explore. And then after that, we'll have one more day in Kyushu because after Fukuoka, we'll be in Kita Kyushu, which is right in the northern part of the island. But for now, I'm gonna start getting moving because even though I put insect repellent on, there's still loads of them around me and I'd rather not be stood here right now. It might be sunny and drier now, but it seems like the wind's starting to pick up a bit because looking at the weather, there is a gale advisory for Fukuoka, which, you know, I have to deal with a bit more wind again on the trip, but at least I'm not going anywhere in a hurry. And like I knew this already anyway, but I'm solidifying my decision of what is the, I don't know the best way, but I guess scariest roads to ride on in Japan. Because right over there, you might not be able to see with the angle of the GoPro, so it's a wide angle, but over there, is the expressway right in the background and that's like the big big roads in japan that bikes and motorbikes aren't allowed on at all so not being allowed on those types of roads you kind of expect the like next stage down of like the scariest roads to be on are the properly wide like say three four lane roads where there's a lot of traffic going through but that's not the case at all that I've found. But it's actually these sorts of roads. And what I mean by that is that these sorts of roads, apart from the expressways, are really good routes for linking up between busy places. But, you know, a single lane and the roads themselves aren't too wide. In fact, as I was saying, like, it was even thinner a bit up the road. But, you know, at certain times of the day, as you see, massive trucks are passing right now. And when I was riding on before up the road, there was about literally seven that passed me in a row like quite close to each other so you know when the road isn't too wide it could be quite daunting riding on something like this and also right now if you didn't feel like being on the road too much like the path isn't doing you too much favors it's quite thin and not that well maintained and it's not like cyclists and people on bikes aren't allowed to be on these roads like i am allowed to be on the road and that's where the consideration of Japanese drivers towards cyclists comes in really handy. Because if you put me in the UK right now on this sort of road with this sort of traffic, absolutely no way I'd be riding on it. I'd be fighting something else. But I feel like I've been in Japan long enough now that I can ride on these roads relatively comfortably. But now that I have been starting on this road for a little bit, there is like a fuck ton of trucks out. And it looks like the path widens out at the bottom, so... Since I'm not going anywhere fast, I might chill on the path for a little bit. So I don't think I'm on this road too much longer. Well, I hope I'm not anyway. But I guess there's only one way to find out, eh? Well, the path did get wide a little bit, but it looks like it gets tight again back up there, so... It looks like I'll have to stick to the road for the time being, but... As I say, I think I'm only on it for about two kilometers, then I can come off. today combined with the headwind so it's slowing me down enough that it makes you feel like you don't belong on the road because you're going quite slow and i'm usually someone who never rides on the path flight but you know if it's one of those days where you've got a good feeling about something then i guess you just got to follow it and i thought maybe because i'm going chill and slow that maybe we'll see some stuff along the way i can stop and have a look at but as you've seen it's mostly just been busy road with not too much either side apart from the mountains in the distance of course but oh well it is what it is but right now, we are pretty much right in the middle of the ride, so, you know, might as well look for some food. And I'm in a town called Torsu right now, and you know, there's a decent selection of stuff to eat here, but I'm not overly hungry right now, so I'm not gonna go too wild like I did yesterday lunchtime. And there's a Starbucks just down the road, so that sounds like it'll be just enough for me right now. And that'll be my true assimilation, actually, because Starbucks is very popular here. They're bloody everywhere. Well, I'm at the Starbucks now, but just down the road, there is the Golden Arches and I'm not gonna lie to you, 
I'm very tempted. And there we have it, decisions being made, McDonald's time. Yeah, I'll tell you what, like, that's the first time I've had a Samurai Mac before and let me tell you, that shit slaps. As a side note as well, because I want to get some coffee afterwards, I'm actually quite looking forward to when the combinis are going to get rid of the matcha snacks out of their lineup. Because there must be some sort of seasonal thing or just time of the year when there's just a boatload of matcha snacks because, you know, with matcha itself, the actual tea, I can kind of take it or leave it, but when matcha's like inside of a sugary treat, when it's pumped full of sugar, Man, for some reason I just can't turn it down. Just the flavour of matcha and sugar together. Something about it that just gets me going. And I'm a few kilometres out of Torsu and the roads are still a bit busy, still a bit crap. So I don't know how much I'll touch the camera from here until we get to Fukuoka. But that's about 30 kilometres away, so I guess we'll see what happens. <laughs> This has turned out quite interesting now because the busy road I was on, you know, it led you onto the expressway, which I'm not allowed to be on. But there's a service road running alongside of it, which, you know, it's not the most interesting stuff to look at, but it's nice to have a section of a day where there's absolutely no traffic on a road. And it's undulating a bit, but I can get a little bit of speed in and just not have to worry about trucks up my ass. It's quite nice. <laughs> taking it quite slow today I'm still gonna be quite early for the hostel that I'm staying at in Fukuoka and I'm not quite in the city just yet but with a lot of Japanese cities as you're rolling in or you just around the outskirts or whatever you get these big wide rivers usually with the paths alongside them and if you catch it like I have right now when there's absolutely nobody here it can be quite a peaceful place to stop and just kill a bit of time in an otherwise hectic environment. So after a nice chill here, we'll probably go a bit further down, get a coffee in Fukuoka, and then by that point, we'll be ready to check in. forget to take the camera out with me when I arrived in Fukuoka the other day but it's got to trust me bro Fukuoka it's a very nice city and it feels to me as I'm shooting these that these sets of videos probably aren't going to be the most coherent thing that I've ever made and to be honest with you the video portion is probably the least of my concerns because you know there's a lot going on on this trip with it being fully self-supported because I mainly want to keep the enjoyment that I'm having on these rides first and foremost above everything else and then, you know, I've got all the organization to do with booking accommodations and campsites and whatnot. So to be honest, I can't really be bothered to spend loads of extra time getting a wide variety of shots. I'm feeling quite happy of just pressing the record button at random times and then hoping it comes together later. I hope this has been enjoyable, but there you go. There's my excuse if it's not. But today we're riding 105 kilometers from Fukuoka to Shimonoseki, which I said it was Kyushu the other day, but it's actually a little bit north. It's on the very southern tip of Honshu instead of being right at the top of Kyushu. And this is the amount that I've done already today. So I don't think I'm gonna stand here and procrastinate any longer and get back to it, I think.
moment, it seems like the roads that I'm going to be on during this ride are the same that I was on on the last ride because it seems like I'm on these fast moving single lane roads. But I mean, there is a few trucks going about, but luckily for me today, it's not nearly as busy as it was on the last ride. And hopefully now that it's been a week into the journey, I can start getting rid of some of the holiday diet mentality because my eating habits over the past week or so have been quite bad like i was in fukuoka yesterday and you know it's famous for its ramen so heavy meals had been had but since it was my day off i was just gorging myself on loads of crap and you know i feel like i am actually heavier than i was when i started which is quite an impressive feat for a week of cycling and you do read anecdotes online and watch videos about bike touring in different countries and it seems hard to maintain a good diet when you're on the road for so long but you know, Japan's one of those countries where you get a decent selection of healthy food and shops that are pretty much everywhere. So, you know, I should really stop acting like an absolute pig. jumping off the busy road now because it looks like I'm about to join an actual cycling course and I've said before like cycling paths and cycling courses in Japan are super hit or miss but it looks like over here we've got something that's fairly new paved fairly newly painted so I'm actually looking forward to trying this one out also doesn't hurt to have the cycling path in and amongst all this scenery very beautiful right now Seems like this bike path is just mainly a spruced up river path, which I'm not complaining about. And I feel like, and I know this happens in like loads of other countries as well, it happens in the UK as well, but I feel like being in Japan where it's so common, just anytime there's any sort of river near an urban area, just put a path alongside it that you can cycle on and walk on, but just put cycling paths everywhere, please. It would make the world so much better. Just more people want to get involved and get fit if they've got actual infrastructure to help them along with it. It's weird as well, because I've been riding on quite a lot of busy roads, but I've barely passed any Michino Ekis, which are like roadside stations here in Japan. And when you first look at bike touring here, like these are some of the first things that you see and people give advice about, but I've barely passed them at all. And it might be a bit before lunch, but apparently these roadside stations are always stocked with the local foods of the area, so... Maybe it's time I go and have a look on one. And I do realise I just had that spiel before about eating healthier, but, you know, it'll just be a little bit. Just a little bit. To be honest, that roadside station didn't have the best selection. It was mainly a supermarket, which looks pretty good, but it's not what I needed right now. And that only had, like, a few bento meals, really, but there was a bakery there, which is a bit of a gamble in Japan, because bread here isn't too great. But... It actually turned out to be really nice. Got a chicken teriyaki sandwich and I got a donut. I do promise my breakfast was a little bit healthier though. I feel like I'm walking back on my words already about eating too much shit food. And the cycling course takes us down here now and it looks like we've already lost that lovely painted cycle path. So we're just gonna have to see how busy the road is and it looks like it'll be a nice time. It looks like it's gonna be by the coast. So let's go check it out. I'm literally five seconds down the road and the path starts again. So I was literally up there when I was just talking about losing the path. You should really not chat shit about things so early, you know. expecting a cycling course so long and what well, is basically the middle of nowhere so it's been pretty good riding so far like I say all that though but this stretch along the beach has gotten pretty brutal because 
you know, I don't know if it's been drip dropping with rain a little bit and we are next to water as well. It's decently humid. There's a fuck ton of flies about. There's loads of them. I'm getting pelted by flies any time I go forward at the minute, basically. I can barely lift my head up to see where I'm going because they're just... And that's why I'm always wearing sunnies, even though it's not that sunny today. Because, you know, I am trying to look as cool as possible. But at the same time, like, there's so much shit flying about when you're cycling that you just want to keep out of your eyes because, you know, I want to be able to see the entire time. And it also seems like I'm by some sort of military complex or something. Something I haven't really ridden alongside since Okinawa where, bloody hell, I thought I rode past one every half an hour there. I don't know whether it's like a Japanese Defence Force base or a US base, but yeah, it's been a while since I rode past something like this because you can hear the noise of whatever they're doing behind the trees there. Yeah, I don't know how loud that's coming across on the camera there, but can't really tell what they're doing, but it sounds like they're doing something. And here we go, a bit down the road, here's my answer. Japan Air Self-Defense Force Ashia Air Base. And of course you've got to have a mascot for everything, don't you? And there's proper benches around here as well, so they must fly into the air regularly, and it must be like a little show every once in a while. But tell you the truth, couldn't give a shit about any military-related stuff at all. It just really hit me as well, I never really stopped to look at any of the smaller shrines that line my journey, like I did in some of the original trips that I did. But of course, just as I bloody stopped, it's starting to rain, so... I think I'll make this one quick. And to be honest, I think it's because when I'm stopping in some of the bigger cities, like I'm going and having a look at the shrines there. So I feel like I have seen plenty of shrines, but they're just in the big cities and I am always forgetting apparently to take my camera out. So none of you guys have seen that. It's bloody nice though, isn't it? Like these smaller sites, even though the buildings are a lot smaller, still never fail to impress me. The way the lanterns are arranged down the path as well, it's really sending this one over the top. It seems like people are starting to congregate here for some actual reason though, so I think I might just quickly slip out now. Still glad I stopped to see it though. the end of this ride as well we're going to be passing a pretty interesting piece of wrestling history but unfortunately looking at the ferry schedules to actually get to the area might have missed the chance to do it today but hopefully we'll be able to get a good vantage point from where we actually pass it from and i'm going to keep you in suspense until we actually get there so we've got something to look forward to at the end of the video remember whether we'll have drinks like this in the UK but we've got one here Calpus soda and we've got another one down here and it's basically like a yogurt drink which is carbonated and I'm not gonna lie I kind of fuck with it you know how it is I'm just embracing the culture and all that spot now but I don't know with the bad weather and the wide angle of the GoPro you'll actually be able to see it but I'll put in some phone footage over the top so I can zoom in a little bit but basically what makes this area so interesting is that over there there's a little island called Ganyuujima and that was the location of what I think is the longest pro wrestling match in recorded history you know maybe back in the olden days there's ones that are way longer but that is the site of New Japan's island death match between Antonio Inoki and Masa Saito I think there might have been one other one, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But I know the real infamous one is between Anoki and Masa Saito. And I know Gan Ryujima is more famous for a samurai battle that happened way back in the day, which is why that match took place on that island to begin with, but that's not why it's more famous to me. And you know, I'm a bit sad that the ferry timetables haven't really lined up that I can actually go to the island, but at least I'm glad to see it in some sort of capacity. And now I think this is where this video is going to end because I think I'm just going to do Kyushu in one video. I won't really know until a few months time, but I think this is where it's going to end. Because the short amount of time left today is on these sorts of roads and it's getting cold and I really want to get out of it now. But I hope you've been enjoying the random snippets of the journey I've been showing you so far. And the next time I'll see you, I'll be starting on Honshu. So until then, I'll catch you later.